Hey guys and what's up TFS? It's your girl Fun Size and I'm back with another fun creation. Welcome to another episode on Self-ish where we learn how to boost our self-confidence through self-discipline by breaking bad habits and unlearning what we were taught growing up. while trying to teach my audience and my family back at home that like it all has everything to do when you say you want to break generational curses which i'm learning today they label it as generational hurt if you want to break that you have to understand where it starts from and so you can work on that inner work which is the whole basis of this podcast so you can boost your self-confidence with some self-discipline and like i've been getting off subject with but not getting off subject what i'm uh, trying to let people honor uh, is go ahead what you about i'm to say? Go ahead, finish your, your statement. No, that's I'm what I'm up. about to say. Oh. Like, my whole thing is, like, I'm also, like, with babe grabbing her self-awareness today and everything that's going on, I'm making it very known that we cannot enable the people that are around us, regardless if they are family members, regardless if they are our kid, regardless of, you know, people at work. We have to hold them accountable for the but things you, that they you, do you, and how you, they treat us. You have to be mindful now that... I love that you word. You can't change... Who they are. But I'm not asking to you have to, You have to learn how to deal. Okay, so my mom, she's yes. a functioning alcoholic. Okay, we got a label to that word today. <laughs> yeah. she's, a function, Earlier, yes. she's a functioning alcoholic. She will go to work, come okay. home, get drunk. If you don't talk to her the first two hours after she get home, she ain't gonna remember the conversation you had the next day. I understand. So, she's not going to change. She is who she is. I understand it. She deals with her hurt the way she deals with it. I have to meet her where she is. Even though I've grown, she's not ready to grow. So, I have to meet her where she is. I can't expect and see that's how people get hurt because you expect people to change because you've changed that part you can't expect that you have to meet people where they are very true now if you're not willing to meet them where they are then you just have to you know we we have to separate you yeah, because that's separate. what I mean you by enabling. To, you don't have to separate. I mean, I guess it depends separate on the type, meaning, of re, the, the type of relationship. Because separate meaning put boundaries in place. Correct. Good job, it. Oh, More yeah. so separate. So it's like to the point where, you know what, I know that I can't come to you and talk to you about certain things. I'm not going to put myself in that predicament that part. to feel hurt again that part. trying to come into confiding you. That part. Again, we are normalizing right. <laughs> things that shouldn't be normalized. I understand you got to meet people. I also want to hear your thought on that part. Go ahead. But I understand what you're saying. Meet them where they are. But we not, no. That we also right, taking every, accountability. You're enabling. I understand. Like, I can meet you, you where you are. But you no. call it enabling, but it's it's not enabling. Is this is how they dealt with their pain? Mm-hmm. They don't know any other way, and I'm not knocking you for that. And until they can acknowledge that they're hurt, correct, and seek out the help that they need for themselves, correct. You just have to meet them where they are. No, 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 no. Well, you're using I, the wrong words. Hold on, let her finish. I, I'm sorry. What no, finish saying what you're about to say first. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on that one. What's the wrong word, though? When you say you got to meet them where they are. Yeah. Okay. And, babe, what are you about to say then? I was going to say, but as an adult, you have to take accountability mm-hmm. for self. Mm-hmm. If somebody is coming to you and saying, hey, this is something that I dislike, mm-hmm. and you're continuing to disregard that conversation. But I'm meeting you where you are. I'm meeting you where you are at that conversation once we got to that conversation and i have to continue to have that conversation it's a roadblock and you don't you don't respect me right and that's that's when you know that's when you have to tell yourself like look they're not gonna go any further correct so i I can't go any further and and that's what i want to say right now you have to fight through that that was my fight during that conversation because it's kind of like a race it's all right, nope, let's put it like this. The horse and the buggy. If the buggy breaks, 
You just got to get on that horse and keep riding down the street. Right. And leave that buggy there. So I'm going to leave that buggy where it's at. I'm going to leave that conversation where it is so I can, I no longer have to have that conversation with you because you already heard me. Right. So I'm not meeting you. I'm anymore. not meeting you anywhere. Well, we met already. Yeah. And where we met, okay, yeah. we so, had a disagreement. So, and that's the so, point I'm getting Okay, at. yeah. So it's not meet you where you're at, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like. We not, hold on, right, like, let me say that. We not here for that. We not telling my audience that. No, <laughs> we are here to boost our self-confidence I'm, I'm, I'm through sorry, self-discipline. I'm, it, well, you don't it, have to do nothing. It is self-discipline. I don't want to say. All right, like, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, i be 50 next year. Okay, I was waiting Amen. for a number drop. Yes, Jamaica, and, Jamaica. Go ahead. <laughs> and it's like, with my family, I know my older generation family, my aunts and uncles, they're not going to change. They they are who they are. So when I say meet them where they are, I know I can't go to them and say, you know, you what you did to me as a child hurt me. Because their mindset is not going to acknowledge it. Their mindset is... But if you on. put it in certain words, do you think that they would even, like... I was. Saying, I understand. What you, I already know the question. No. Nope. I knew the answer too. I already know. I already know it. They have to They're, be in a state of receiving. For sure. And she's already mapped out. And like, like, and that's a downfall for her as well. But she's already mapped out. Like, there's no need to talk to you because you're not going to understand where I'm coming from. Because if I already were, tried to have these if conversations. If I had it before, like we said, if for I sure. had it before, then there's nothing to talk about. But in actuality, what you need to understand is, like, I'm teaching my audience. Like I keep saying. I'm going to go back on what you were saying because the way you worded it, I understood it, but it, I definitely is wrong for my type of audience. And what I'm saying is you you definitely can go voice that. It don't matter the age. It don't matter the time. It don't matter how you feel at the end of the day. They're your emotions, your feelings. If you feel triggered and you're noticing a cue in your adult years, voice it. Stop normalizing being quiet. I don't know where y'all from, but I don't live in the South. Like, respectfully, my family from the South. We don't live in the South. And I am teaching my parents to this day how to communicate even as a married couple in this day and age, how it can work and stay successful. So what I'm telling y'all is, I'm spitting over here because I'm passionate about it. What I'm telling y'all is, you can go say how you feel. You can voice it, and it, like M said in the beginning, it's something you're doing for you. As long as you got it off your chest, you're like, like what people out here nowadays talking about, oh, I need closure. Girl, that's your closure right there. I hate that little closure word because the closure was given in the disrespect. But if you need to do this in your adult years and it's something, because I know you just said it. I don't want somebody who's hearing this can feel like, oh, well, there's no point in me going to go talk to him because I've already mapped out that you're not even going to understand where I'm coming. No, 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 no. no. It don't oh, matter. Oh, oh, oh. Especially okay. during your self-love journey. This okay. is your healing Hold journey. Up. I'm it, sorry. Yeah, that does me, ma- it does it, matter. It, it does matter. What I'm saying is... Is, it's kind of like beating a dead horse. If you've had this conversation like more than said. five times, correct? Then now it's time for you to say to yourself, "They're not going to receive what I'm saying. They are not going to respond the way I believe they should respond correct. to our conversation." So I can no longer have the conversation with them because they are they're closed-minded to it correct Mm -hmm. they're not gonna open up so after you have expressed the way you felt Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i I have the three rule strike if i didn't express it to you more three times i'm not gonna express it anymore okay because you're not hearing me you got one so I'm me. not gonna waste my time or my breath. Now I give you three chances yeah, because you know at, at different times, like I said, people can change. So we may have that conversation, you know, one year. Which means the people who are older can change. The ones who stay stuck in their ways. I say the ones that won't change are the ones that are over eighty. Understandable. Like I said, I'm fifty. So for me my older my elders they're in their 70s and 80s they're not going to change like they've lived that like that is what it is yeah for sure so for sure i respect they're, that they're not going to change but so for <laughs> so for those definitely... for, for those that have that are my age correct 50 and yeah. older you know that the older generation is not going to change they're they're 
and they're done. Okay. They they say that they, they didn't live they their life, they the, and they say right. you know it, I've been living like this all all this yeah. Time. So it, it, but y'all also had to learn to be okay with that too. Because that's right. something also I wanted to piggyback off of earlier. One of the things we have to understand is we also have to be okay with shit that we say and not registering to other people because we are so we're either anxious or avoidant individuals because we are this way we have to understand that you don't need validation through other people that's mm-hmm. why i say your self-love journey your healing journey is all about you and your focus is on you so trying to get that validation from somebody else you have to understand when you go in that conversation and you're voicing how that person made you feel you you need to tell yourself that end result the happiness and the reward like we're teaching ourselves babe the reward is you getting that off your chest yeah. You allowing your mental space to actually, well, you allowing your mental to get some damn space. So when you sit over there and you say, oh, yeah, well, I'm talking about it. Like I said, you need to walk in that conversation with the with the mindset of believing that the end result will only be I'm good enough knowing I said what I said. Yes. I don't need validation from somebody else. I don't need you to honor what I'm saying. I don't even need you to respect what I'm saying for real, for real. I don't need a thank you. I don't need a, oh, I'm sorry. I don't even need a fucking apology is what I learned in my adult year. Because you know how many people walking around with an apology that they never receive? Mm. A sorry that they never receive? You know how many monks and Buddhists out here done got spit on, yelled at, and disrespected, and still had to say, God be with you. Like, Christians, and listen, people mm. not even getting spiritual, but I, not individuals just in general who have a... Uh, mental toughness, like we say on this podcast, they got mental toughness. They got that stability and that reassurance within themselves to understand that I don't need your validation to even accept anything that I'm saying to you right now. I'm going to say it, and that's just how it's going to be. That's just like we went out to breakfast yesterday, and my aunt had, um, I was talking to my papa, and my aunt chimed in while we, uh, you was in the bathroom, M. And she had made a statement saying, well, who you talking to? And I had leaned in and said, I'm talking to whoever want to respond. There's a time and a place I feel like the joke for everything, but on my self-love journey, you're going to respect what I'm saying. I don't need you to respect it, but in my mind, like you said, them crazy people who be in relationships, my non-negotiables are my non-negotiables. If I, I've i learned that, I'm going to have boundaries. I look a little poodle running out the door. Sorry, y'all. This dog just came out the hotel. We saying that by himself and just running. I know the owner of Whittle, but I'm just saying, he's about to come out now. Like, oh. slow down, Rico. But, <laughs> went to but my aunt definitely gave the example. Like, the example I'm giving now was my aunt. She had said that. And like I told y'all before, when it comes to y'all boundaries and y'all self-love and self-care journey, y'all need to understand that you need to take that shit serious. Take it serious. Because if you're not taking it serious, then why the hell should somebody else take it serious? And that example is, the, you know, why I gave on my aunt is because I'm big on... Whatever I'm saying or whatever I'm doing, I got to walk it and talk it. So if I'm talking to my papa and you chime in and you say something, I know it's a joke. But in the same token, I took it as disrespect and I took it as it being me the center of attention. And I told myself I need to work on myself too because why did that even bother me? But it was only because of the fact that I felt like it was eyes everywhere. And while I'm trying to have a one-on-one conversation, the statement had made everyone's attention on myself. Not the whole damn point. We'll talk about that in another damn podcast. But... I'm catching M up and at the same time forgetting I'm talking to y'all. But that whole self-awareness on that one is definitely, like I'm telling y'all, during the journey, just understand that as long as you get it off your chest, as long as you respect the boundaries that you are, you know, as long as you honor yourself at the end of the day, then like M said, you, you can accept the fact that people are stuck in their ways and that's okay. Be okay with not having a conversation with somebody be okay with walking in that conversation and saying okay well this might not be um a situation better yet the, like i used to tell myself before i have a conversation with somebody i tell myself it's either going to be neutral pleasant or unpleasant like them the um, them the only three things that that's it it's if you have in the adult like in adult world you have to realize those are the only three fucking things like when you have a conversation with somebody and when you realize how to honor yourself and realize your triggers and your cues that little three-step thing that them little three questions right there like is it going to be unpleasant is it going to be um neutral is it going to be unneutral you're going to be cool even if you sit in there right now here's another fun fact it's a little free game you sit in there right now you piss the fuck off don't know why ask yourself why five times why am I pissed off right now? Because this bitch irritated me. Well, why did that bitch irritate me? Because she always doing some dumb shit. Why she always doing some dumb shit? Because she ain't got no fucking man. Why she ain't got no man? Because the bitch always over here acting retarded. You not even upset no more. If you, you laughing. You, you laughing now. By the time you get to the fifth why? If you sit there 
and get, give yourself that mental toughness and ask yourself before you had a conversation five whys or ask yourself, or tell yourself it's either going to be pleasant unpleasant or neutral i guarantee life is going to be better like it's going to it's going to be better because i'm already telling myself like i know how this going to go i know how this may play out and if it's the opposite of what i expected i know how to handle it and if it turns out to be what i expected i already fucking know how to handle it it's nothing to go about like bitch i knew yeah i'm giving up on expectations of other people for sure like that's even why this i said it's gonna be one of the two or the three like i'm not expecting you to do nothing other than be yourself that i have expectations i expect you to respect yourself the same way you want me to respect you i'm not gonna tell my audience that you better have fucking expectations that's why a lot of y'all walking around here dealing with that damn five ten year relationship because you talking about i don't want oh, in, re- in a relationship in a relationship like, but what? if i'm talking to somebody but that's a, see that, that's how i get hurt. a relationship, I, a relationship. I, that's how i get rela- hurt thank you this that, podcast is about everything. A relationship is a relationship. A that that that's how a lot of people get hurt because they go into a conversation expecting to hear things that their that person is probably not going to say. Right. Like so, even for me. I don't have expectations. That's why I say I don't have expectations because when I go into a conversation with somebody, you what want I to want something. them to say, they may not say. So now I feel some type of way because I was expecting them to feel the way I felt and acknowledge it. But because they don't feel the way I feel and they didn't acknowledge it, now I'm a little upset when I shouldn't be because I should have never expected them to feel the way I felt because they're not me. And I honor that too. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying is there's a difference between, how can I, how can I say this? Like I, I just had it in my head too. But there's a difference between... Say the last part that you said again so I can get my train of thought back. That I can't expect... My expectations are not the same as their expectations. Right. And what I'm saying is when it... Well, I was trying to say is when it comes to expectations in a conversation, I am not expecting anything in a conversation, honestly. I'm going and I don't even know you for real, for real. Like, like for example, we, a random person. We out in Chicago right now. Random person come up. I'm not expecting anything from you. The only thing I'm expecting this to be is... Pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. I don't sit over here like like you were saying. I get what you were saying, but in this scenario that I was given, no, I don't. I'm not saying I have expectations in a conversation. What I'm teaching my audience is how to set their themselves up for an encounter with someone that may give them anxiety or may make them feel overwhelmed. So at the end of the day, I'm teaching you how to handle that scenario instead of feeling like you got to be a hermit and you closing down and you you limiting yourself instead of stepping out your comfort zone like the previous podcast we talked about. No, I'm sitting over here saying when you get in that situation or that environment, you need to combine your mental state to be a, a humble, a humble, some type of humbleness. So once you learn, oh, either this is going to be, un- even if it's in the middle of conversation, okay. like we talking right so, now, it's going to be pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. I didn't know how this podcast was going to be, but I didn't want it to be, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I know you need to have boundaries. So at the end of the day, um... Yeah, well, you can have expectations and boundaries in a conversation, and that's what I mean when I say, like, you need to let yourself know if it's going to be neutral, pleasant, or unpleasant, because then now you know how to handle that environment that's in front of you, and you know how to regulate your emotions and control your impulses instead of overreacting, and you're not thinking, that's what I'm teaching my audience, think before you react. So if you sit over there saying, oh, well, I had, I wanted, I expected you to say this. You fucked up already. You're self-sabotaging. And I hate that word, but it is what it is. Because you're literally telling yourself, oh, well, I thought it was going to be this. I thought we were going to do that. Well, that's just like, my podcast is literally relationships on business, family, and spouses. Not to cut you off, but a prime example, um, the first time I told my mom that my uncle molested me. Okay. Now. In my mind, I was expecting her to say, you know, oh my God, I'm so sorry it happened. You know, what can I do? Understandable. How that old were conversation, you? Let me ask it. How old were you at that time? When I told her? Yes. Uh, 19. And how old were you when it were happening? 10. So it took you nine years. Because so once again, you were talk, growing up and decided to we're speak not up. supposed to talk about right. it. Right. That's my, my podcast is all about that. Unlearning what you were taught. Growing up, you were unlearned what you were taught. You realized this isn't a healthy way for you to go about in life. And you decided right. to voice it. Because I was angry and I couldn't figure out 
why small things would set me off the way it did. Now, in that scenario, yes, you have expectations. You you at a, at that age, you're not asking yourself, "Oh, it's just going to be pleasant." You're not even right. telling yourself. I mean, that. that's what I'm you're saying. That's why I said that, that's what I'm saying. I I think I miscued your conversation on expectations. Understandable. Because depending on who that conversation is with. You may have expectations. You may be going to someone who hurt you, expecting that once you express how they made you feel, they will apologize. Right. Where, in some cases, they may not give a fuck about how you felt and not apologize. But... It's a lot of fuck boys out here. So, <laughs> you yeah. know, it is. So, you know, now you come off as you expected that and it didn't happen. So, now you're hurt even more. That part. Fuck so girls. now, so now you're back into your withdrawal state because you didn't get what you expected. That's why I say I don't ex- like with a stranger. Then yeah, you know, expect it is what it is. Right. But when you go into a conversation with someone who has wronged you, right, you can't expect anything from that because you will only hurt yourself. And even then, I'm I love how you worded that, and I'm so proud of you and a lot of the um, statements that you made. You did some self awareness as well within this conversation. So yeah, go ahead and laugh that up. I'm proud of that. Yes, you you roses. I'm proud of you. But I also want to teach my audience that was a great point that you made. And in the same sense, I also believe I I I agree and disagree. Because in the same sense, you have to have like I keep telling y'all, you have to have those expectations as well in that scenario specifically. Because it's your caregiver. It's somebody who you consider to be a safety net for you. So when you sit over there and say, well, somebody that gave you that trauma, you don't want to sit over there and hold them accountable, basically. And it's not even saying we're not holding them accountable. We're just saying over there saying, well, um, I'm voicing it to you. And for, for lack of words in that given moment, you're just not there for me. So I don't know what else to expect because I expected you as my caregiver, because I'm going off of your example specifically, as my caregiver, I expected you to be there for me in a certain way. And that's what I'm teaching my audience. It's okay to have those expectations. So when you sit over there and say, well, I didn't, you know, I'm not expecting anything after that. It's like, I get that. But self-discipline, we create self-awareness and that self-awareness creates self-assuredness. And you have to understand that even if you have that mindset of, okay, well, I'm going to sit over here and expect this to go like this because I expected you to say that and you didn't say it. Like I told y'all, y'all still have to be okay with that. Be hey. okay with understanding. Go ahead, say what I, I, You can I, interject I, at any time. I, I, I see what you're saying, but see, then we go back to the generational hurt. No, 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 no. no what I'm saying is like when you're expecting things like I'm saying with my mom. So, like I was saying with my mom, when I expressed to her that I had got molested, like I said, I was expecting that conversation to go with, oh my God, baby, you know, blah, 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 I'm so sorry it happened to you. It didn't go that way. Understandable. Then, you know, years later, we found out that my mom had been molested as a child. Understandable. So... Because her mom had been molested as a child. So her response was her response because it was her response. Right. So it it just goes that way. But because at the time I expressed that to my mom because I didn't understand what the generational hurt was. I was expecting more of a loving response where I got the response of, all right, we'll suck that shit up. And that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. And that's, I get, so, like I said, I get what you were saying with the audience. For so, sure. Yeah, so I'm saying it, it just depends on the conversation. For who, sure. Who you're having that conversation with, whether you need to go in with expectations or not. And because sometimes them expectations can backfire on you. They definitely can self-sabotage. And, 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 and hurt you more than help. Very true. And that's also what I'm saying. I literally agree with everything you were saying as well. But with having those expectations, what I want to teach my audience is, even if you have them and it don't go out how you intended, like we said, oh, say I thought the conversation was going to be pleasant because I've learned that in my adult years and it don't turn out to be pleasant. What I'm teaching my audience is you have to have that self-discipline to be okay with that result because the only reason it bothers you is because you don't have the answer you wanted. But to walk in that conversation with, oh, I expect this and it better be said like this. 
you are still self-sabotaging yourself from Jump Street because you're yes. already given those expectations. So, like I said, I agree with what you're saying, but to say, like, okay, you shouldn't have expectations with a person that gave you that trauma bond, it's like certain expectations you shouldn't have. Maybe we should give it a different word. No, you shouldn't have expectations, yeah, word. but boundaries... It's something that you need well, to have. Self-discipline is something that you need to have. Because even if that situation does occur, you need to be, you need to trust yourself that you can handle it. You need to trust yourself that you can deal with whatever's going to happen after that, even if you don't feel like you have the mental stability to handle that response. Like, because, even, go ahead. Sorry, even for me, like, going through this year and finding my boundaries, because I'm going to say for, before this year, I didn't have any boundaries. Or okay. I didn't put them forth. Right, there you go. I was very lenient with my boundaries. There we go. And with certain people with my boundaries. So this year, having a conversation with my parents, I didn't only have one conversation, or with my family in general. I didn't only have one conversation. I had multiple with within months apart. My first conversation, because I had expectations, I broke down because it wasn't what I, what I right, wanted like it to it be. Right, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. But then going in and going, okay, I've expressed myself one time. That mental I understand you didn't get it that one time. That physical grit. Let me go ahead and I'm going to have this conversation with you again. And I'm going to do it individually now. So individually, you know how I feel for you. So then it went from another conversation. Okay, so you're continuing to do the same thing that I'm, I'm begging at this point. Now I feel like I'm having conversation after conversation of begging. Why am I begging... For something that I want to put forth in my life. Something that I know is going to make me healthy. Mm -hmm. Something I know is going to make my mental healthy. Right now, that means that you and I are not in a healthy state. But then it goes to, okay, now I know that you won't accept this boundary. I won't bring this conversation to you anymore. Because now you've already, you already know on multiple occasions how I've been feeling. So now I still love you. I'm still going to conversate with you. Because you're my family. And all while these conversations, we are still learning. We don't have that expectation that we but, created at the front. Not right, to you off. right. That was what I was getting at. Right, we don't have like, that expectation. I don't have that expectation but I because now, I already know that it, it hurt me. So now, why am I being hurt for something that, for for me telling you how to love me? Generational hurt. And that's because where that enabling comes in because we are, uh, with that self-awareness, not to cut you off and keep your thought as well, but with that self-awareness, we are still being kind and compassionate and mindful of the journey that they may be going. And like you said, we're meeting them where they are. But while you were meeting them, like I said in a previous podcast, when you meet a person where they're at, you are literally not respecting your boundaries. You're right. not respecting yourself because you're also, for example, we f we three cars over. We we still you, This car right here been parked with us this whole damn time. We decided to move up to that parking spot right there and that car still right here. But we feel some type of way because we've been together this whole damn time. Right, I can still come back and visit I'm you. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. I'm not doing that. Because I gave point, you the car example. In human world, in the real world, at like uh, you about to get to this point in my time in my life, I'm not doing that. At this right. point in my life, I'm not going to you by saying that, it's okay to stay where you that are. You've made. I, can't, I, can't, I can't stay with you. I can't part. force someone to come on my journey and we're not with me. forcing them to come on a journey now, we're saying that's we're not why I say, expectations. And that's why I say. And if we do, I, it's boundaries that we have. Oh, damn, I ain't even keep it. What? We about to get at our 60-minute mark, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you always at the 60-minute mark. Had to get another one in. So, yes, we was leaving off on the whole expectations within the conversations. But Em's going to get into when you started a therapy, too. But I wanted to literally leave that off with that. You can have the conversation and, you know, be mindful during your self-love journey as well while having those conversations. You Granted, if you've been through trauma with that person, you know, you feel like that first conversation is going to be basically about, oh, well, you hurt me, I hurt you, how can I get past it, and I have expectations. But what we're trying to get you to is to the point where your next situation ship you get into, you are already noticing the red flags before it begins. So you already have the proper communication that you want to put on play with some damn body that you're talking to. So that's what I want to say. Like when you have those expectations, it's going to hurt. But in the same token, remove that word expectation and put boundaries. Mm -hmm. And your boundaries should not bother some fucking body and they go bro they are gonna bother them but it shouldn't get to the point where they ready to cut you off and they don't want to talk to you no more and they over here disrespecting you because like i said previously before we got cut off and whatnot at the end of the day 
me me having respect for my damn self because I'm enabling you because like M said, well, I can always come back and visit you. Now, I'm not coming back to visit you because all I'm teaching you is I've accepted where you are. And I'm all, that goes against everything that I'm preaching to you when I decide to go pull back up in my parking spot. And I'm I okay pull, with you continuing I, to hurt me. Exactly. I'm going to be because here every, every time, time I come you back, me. I get a fucking flat tire. Right. But see, here's the thing. If you know where you left them at, they can't hurt you. And that's why we left said you. we decided. I'm not you. meeting you there. We're getting boundaries. I'm, I'm not meeting okay. you. I'm you leaving you right. there because I got I can't I can't take you with me. I on did my this journey. already. We I met tried. So, okay. Let's let let's put it like this. My older sister. We have had issues our entire life. I think this bitch has been trying to kill me my whole life. Oh God. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that got that got dark fast. Only child well, syndrome, too long. Yeah. Okay. So that's my sister, so I can't stop fucking with her, but I know what I can do with her, so that's what I'm saying. That's your boundaries in place. I can no, go no, no, back no, and visit that. her. That's on what it is. Like I you can said go back. in the previous podcast, that's a choice, mm -hmm. and we're telling you ours within our non-negotiables and boundaries. You're allowed to feel that way. We're saying we right. honor it and everything, well, even with the example. We get, Do you. We giving it to you. We just saying it because we taking a car out of the example and adding your sister in it now. I'm not doing that. And this is my boundaries. Like, I'm not well, doing I mean, because I don't you have say to, a car, I but see, you, I, 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 I have to look at it. You... She's family. You're her family, too. You're honoring and respecting. You're enabling. Like I said, you're going against everything I'm teaching right now. So you're you're enabling. looking at it as enabling, but when a person is not ready to deal with their own trauma, you can't force it so my question is this if a man come up off the street and say hey, bitch i want to fuck you excuse my language but that's my language you gonna feel some type of way because he crossed your boundaries but and you're not gonna give him another chance because he can come up to you in three more days and you're always gonna I remember know. that i might ask him can i fuck him first but you know what i mean like <laughs> you, you, but you see the disrespect in that Oh, hey, I, 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 but you, stay focused but, we got a point at the end of this but i promise you it's a point at the end of this <laughs> But she get what we you, You're not gonna let him. You're family. not gonna let him come back to you in three days and say, "Hey, Miss, am I able to take you on a date?" Even if he came back proper. But you're gonna let somebody. Yeah. But because you're you're gonna let somebody just because you know them or they got some blood ties to you to continue to disrespect you and go over. Because she doesn't like the e word. Because that's all we create in the e word. And like I said, with the e word, you're still not giving yourself and your boundaries respect. Because of that, because you generational hurt. I, oh, I know what you've been I, through. I, I, I know what you got. I, I, I do it individually. I understand it. I we look talk at about people. Sister. Right. And it is a, it's a individ, everybody is individual to me. Everybody yes. has done something to me. Yes. And my thing is, you and God have to deal with that. Understandable. I'm not going to change who I am right. because you can't change. That's why I'm going right. to leave you where you at. So, that I'm going to leave you where you at. That, that's, there we but go. That's because, all we was getting out of you today. <laughs> but because you are my family and I do have to see you at family functions, we can have conversations. We can be cordial. But exactly it will be the basic of conversation and that's fine you're an how you doing right. exactly teach my audience just the like, right way just like I had teach my audience that's the why right way. I say that's why I say I'm gonna meet you where you at for me I'm just meeting you where you at because you're not ready to come on the journey with me you're not ready to leave your pain and your hurt you mm -hmm. want to stay there so fine you can stay there for now just know I'll come back and visit you and when you're ready to come I can. I, I'll help you through it. See, I'm not I, gonna leave them cold. That's not me. I'm not gonna leave them out there to dry. And that's what I'm about to say. That's, right. I, that's why I say that's I come okay. back and I visit. That's okay. Because eventually you may be ready on that that visit that I come to. So I understand that part too. You you left off saying you were just going. Uh, you revisit. What I'm saying is, at the end of the day. The reason why I have a problem with everything you're saying, not even everything you're saying, just that last part more so, was only because of the fact that we're not bringing self-awareness to the fact of, Emma, how are you today? What do you mean, how am I today? Well, you sit over there and you're saying you don't like the E-word, and perfect example, the phone just rung. 
you went out your way over and beyond you stopped the podcast you wanted to you literally wouldn't let the person hang up and so you decided to say well i can do this i can do this i can do this and even a conversation we had yesterday somebody had told you well i'm not you in that conversation that you I literally can't created, with with my head you off. created that open line of communication with this individual <laughs> who are now telling you that generational hurt you're apologizing for you're still doing in your adult years I just wanted to bring some awareness to that right now. So I'm, go- I'm so glad that that happened before I was about to make my point. Because I was just exactly about to say. And you just right, got finished complaining about your kneecap hurting. That part. Why are we going back and forth and over and beyond? Maybe We're so enabling hard. individuals who love us, who care for us, who are family members and relationships with us. Whether it's in a, a committed situation as far as a family member or a significant other. We are enabling the E-word she hates them to believe that their emotions and feelings I've expressed to my significant other several times what I've taught you while on my self love journey is your emotions are more significant than mine and they're not we are creating self discipline we ain't having expectations we got boundaries we are boosting our self confidence through self goddamn love like nah 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 and what I'm saying is you can go back and check I'm not knocking you they're your feelings but on this show you need to understand we are all about empowering ourselves and learning to take accountability and responsibility. And you need to understand in your adult years, that is the reason why you are so willing to maneuver how you are maneuvering. It's so easy to access. You're, you're accessible. Like, <laughs> you're accessible. And I'm not knocking you for that because you have that golden heart. And you feel as though, well, just because you're not ready to meet me now, at one point in time in your life, you're willing to meet me. That's fine. But who's to say I'll be available at that time? What you're telling and teaching yourself right now is, well, I'm always going to be there for you. I can't knock my sister. But you just told this man that's a crackhead, you might fuck him first if he just randomly came up to you and said, well, can I fuck you? And you said, oh, no, that's not going, that's not acceptable on day one. But sis, for example, just came over and said, bitch, fuck you and I want you dead. But you're the only one who is honoring her emotions because, well, what you do is not going to dictate who I am. It's not going to dictate who I am, but it will show me how to treat you. And that's exactly. what I want to teach my audience. And I've learned how to treat my sister. Understand? Like I said, I'm not saying you we have, I, I have boundaries for her. Yes. Now, all I can say is, I know I was molested as a child. Correct. She could have been too. And she's maybe not, she's not ready to deal with it. Right. That's her truth. That's fine. That's her. But that does not give her an excuse to treat you how she treats you. Because like you've said, in your adult years, you're 50. She's older than you, so she's older. She's choosing not to accept you, not to love you. She's choosing to ignore all of the warnings you've given her. She's choosing to do... As, as an because, adult, you got... Because as, she doesn't know how. It doesn't she, matter. She didn't go and get the help that she needed in order to learn how to love. So none as, of y'all but, told her she needed therapy? I did. None of her told, As, none of y- hold on, babe. None of y'all told her that she need to stop disrespecting y'all. None of y'all told her, I don't like how you talking to me. None of y'all told, so stop with the E shit. Like, as what an do you adult, mean? As an adult, okay. as an individual, if, if you're not willing and you don't want it, you're not going to do it. I don't want you around me. You have to be, That's you can't, choice. you she's can't keep, around you me, can't but keep when saying, I do see her, when I go, like she's, she's in Mississippi. I'll be going down there, you know, next weekend. Okay. I will see her. Understandable. We have talked on the phone. The, the the conversations that we have had, she seems like she's in that mind space now to where she can understand what she did. Right, understand the mind space. That's fine. Most narcissists are. So, see, that's what I, that's what I say. I, I said they're not. I'm not going to just, especially my family, I... It, it's it bred in me that you know family is family so on my journey i learned that for me i keep them in certain spaces when they ready to come out of those spaces i will allow it understandable so i had a thought a little while ago okay so about family okay on a family note if you you can't just be family for me now. Just because you are blood. That's instantly what I thought about just now when she said it. Yeah, just, uh, blood, I'm, no, I'm literally teaching my blood. daughter. I'm literally teaching my daughter. Like, Bongos knows now that you create the family that you want. 
Just because you got a blood tie to them does not make them family. You literally now in my life earn have to earn the aunt title. Earn you it. have to earn the grandmom title. Earn you it. have to earn the uncle title. You cannot be these people because we got blood ties. Because if you don't act that role, you are not that role. Right now, my sister is not aunt because she's my sister. That part, she's aunt. You're she, aunt because she, you, after I've had multiple conversations with you, you have tried to step up. That part. That part. And become aunt. That part. Because she grandmom has not stepped it. up to become grandmom after I have asked her to become grandmom. I needed that support of aunt. I need that support of grandmom, of grandpa. I don't have that. If you can't give me that, mom and dad, and your mom and dad because you birthed me. That's it. Your mom and dad, because you, you're not, my father, you're not doing that for me. me. You don't have that emotional connection. You literally have to earn. I am, and something that hurt my mom, I told her, I am building my family. That part. That part. Y'all y'all have y'all family, which y'all thought was y'all family, which y'all wanted, and your your dream. Like you I'm said, building my family you right now. You have kids. to earn this. Right. I understand that, but once again, we go back to the generational hurt. You have, I'm not going to say you have to understand. I'm asking you to understand our generation didn't know how to deal with it. Okay. We got that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we lash out. Yes. Some of them have yet to figure out how to coincide and to fix the issues that they have. Correct. But when do you say? Yeah, because we're not saying that. I'm not, when do I'm you not say, saying. Hey, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saying. Cut them off. What I'm saying is, meet them where they're at. Like you, okay. You you say your uncle. Like I have an uncle. This man. Every time we have a family event, I'm damn near fifty years old, and he reminds me that he was buying me Pampers. That's why I should respect him. Mm hmm. I tell him constantly. Did I ask for? If I was only goddamn two weeks old, that means I ain't asked for. Okay. So I owe you nothing for you buying me da diapers at mm -hmm. the age of goddamn two weeks old. I owe you nothing for that. Oh yeah, I going into a room. Somebody be like, "Oh baby, come give me a hug." I ask my daughter right there, "Do you want to give them a hug?" You don't have to if you don't want to. Exactly. So I mean, it's. I guess we all have a different mindset. There we go. I'm a Generation X where it's like I choose to try to forgive the hurt that was done because they didn't know they were hurting. Which is what I understand because I'm trying to let you get your thought out. I understand that. But again, what I'm teaching my audience is and I need to come up with I don't need to come up with nothing. That's exactly what it is. Right. I understand you're trying to teach your audience it's empowerment. It's fucking word, bro. You know, like, uh, not to enable people, but once again, my generation is, is we're hurt. I get because that. Because we I didn't find out we were but hurt were until also, we were late. Here's my thing. That's but fine. when you find out you're hurt. You found out. What do you do with it? Because you've gotten help. You've already said, I oh, I did therapy, I did this. But you're the only person that you bring up in this conversation when you keep screaming family, family, family. The first one that came to your mind was your sister. Somebody so that that's why told. I keep saying, yeah, that, that if that's the first person that came to your mind, that's all, that's something that's an emotion that's still on you that bothers you. Even if y'all talking, y'all cord you. It's still in the back of your mind. Like, bitch, I remember you did this. Uncle who brought me diapers. You're, yeah. now, you're now the uncle well, who brought diapers. See, my sister crossed boundaries that I never thought a sister would cross. If it don't register, don't keep saying it. Because if you can say, you this person crossed these boundaries, but I'm also not going to let this person yeah, go. Your ex-husband crossed a bunch of boundaries, too, and you let him go. Are y'all still married? You mean my ex? We never got married. We Are y'all still together? together? Are y'all still together? No. After crossing so many boundaries, you know, you cut ties. It's the same well, yeah, thing. When you introduce me to a bitch, is, oh, yeah, this is Emily. When you try to kill me... <laughs> but hey, hey, she tried to kill me. I was young. That that's a like a that's running. That's, a, that's a running. Fa that's a running diapers. family. That's a running family joke. When they was like, you know, you remember when Nikki stuffed me in the couch and shit, and we all laughed. Yeah, about it like now. we. And that's why I'm saying, like I keep so, saying, y'all, like, I'm not saying cut off people. I'm not. Well, I'm not saying for you specifically. I'm definitely telling my old. Because you got to deal how you deal with you people. Heal, how you deal how with you heal and deal. How you gonna deal with them? 
what we're trying to say is well, more so let me speak for myself what i'm definitely trying to say is be more mindful of how you are dealing with these individuals because while you're sitting over here saying well i'm on my journey you're also the person who told us just because you on your journey we expect other people to heal how we heal the same person who's saying i expect people to heal how we heal so we have expectations is the same person who's saying well i know you not where i need you to be at because that's where i'm at so i'm willing to meet you where you are it's a contradiction after contradiction after contradiction because i can meet you where you are but then in the same token i can still sit over and say well, okay well maybe i'm saying the wrong me. maybe i'm and using the wrong word maybe i'm using my, the wrong somebody words. in my audience will I'm, take I'm, that I'm, and I'm, run I'm not it. saying meet them where they are what i'm saying is be willing to accept, accept them, for who, they them are. for who they are there we go that's all i want to get to accept them for we who can they go are eat. Mm. because <laughs> everybody is not going to change when you change you just have to accept them for who they are and when i say i meet people where they are i i'm a loving caring i will do anything for anybody if i have it but then when you start to use that yeah. and i notice and that it. your will will run dry mm -hmm. and you won't be able to get shit else from me not even powdered milk so what we're saying is and even if that, that goes for family members too that goes for family members, goes too. members too. So when obviously you you're saying sis, sis is not at that point yet. No. Correct. That's what we want to throw out there, y'all. She knows her point. She's going to be there for her. But at the end of the day, she also knows her self-awareness to let herself have some self-discipline. I like And this. for me, I feel like just like us as adults, we've noticed our own self. That part. I'm not going to continue to sit in my funk. And because I know, and I know that there are resources out here for me. In this day and age. I am not going to sit here and I'm not going to allow somebody else to sit there or beg somebody to get out their own funk. Especially when you said it yourself. Especially like when I therapy. had to go find it on my own too. Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, at this time, That's what I mean you're accountable saying, for enabling. yourself. Like, yeah, I'm You not can't going keep saying, it. oh, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, and you're not trying to figure out and how to I work through it. And I keep justifying it because, well, we weren't taught that growing up. Okay, okay. That's, how old well, are you now, though? But like, because I get okay, what you so were saying, so Uncle Who the Diapers. That was then. This is now. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So let me let me put this out there. Yes, please. Um... Shit, just lost my train of thought. It's okay. We over here <laughs> we talking about we ain't got time for that bullshit. We not enabling them because that's what we were saying. It's, one, it's okay for you them to be a certain resources. way, but at the end of the day, you need to understand, if I got to go get this shit on my own, it's YouTube, it's Google. Bitch, you can do the same thing I'm doing. Read I'm not book. sitting here checking back up on you, and the last time I checked on you, I gave you, because if you any, if you know me, or you booked a Budar session with me or a mindset coaching session, you understand I give you work to do. I give you accountability to have. It's There's emotional. homework. You get a journal. I know it's emotional, babe, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's a, right. Like, it's let them know it's emotion. worth it. Because, because you're, you're going to bring out stuff that you ain't even think you had to bring out. And if I come back to you as your accountability coach two weeks later and you still telling me the same shit that you said on two weeks ago, that's a problem for me. Now you got you're extra work. You're not ready. Now if I come back another two weeks, and you still on page one, I know as a business owner, as an individual with value in myself and somebody who has self-discipline in myself, I, I got boundaries, yo. I'm not going to keep running into you. Pick I'm going to let book. you go. I'm going to tell you this ain't something you're ready for. And if you are ready, you need, you're need you not ready for somebody like me to coach you through it. So that's what I'm learning and want to put out there. You, right? willing, you want somebody you to gotta, enable you. Yeah, you I'm want, not here for I'm that. I'm not here for that. You need to earn up to your again? shit. People heal at their own And that's what pace. I'm saying to you. Find somebody else to do it because it ain't me. And that's what I'm teaching my fucking audience. Find somebody else to do it because it ain't the fuck can't you. rush them. I'm, they you, I'm have not to meet it. We got to get M off the podcast because we're not telling you to rush any fucking body. No, I keep telling you, it don't matter what you, you say. If it don't register, it, it, it ain't sinking in. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. Y'all already know. I've, I've, this is your first time on my podcast, probably even hearing how I talk to my audience. There is literally 12 other episodes that teach them how to boost their self-confidence through self-discipline. And that is one of the things I stress to them. You do not have to be willing to meet anybody any fucking where. Because at your point in time, when you're healing right now, who's willing to meet you there? Who's mm. selling, oh, I'm so proud of you for what you're doing? Who is sitting other than this podcast? Who in your damn circle telling you, damn, bro, I know when you was younger, you used to be a crackhead. But now that you older, I fuck with your journey. I know it was hard raising your kids because your baby dad died. Or he stepped out on you, but I see you doing it now, bro. I know it was hard getting that job, bro, but I'm glad as shit you didn't had it for a whole year. Ain't nobody talking that shit to you. And all we doing is justifying, normalizing. Like I said before, it's okay. 
No, the fuck is not. I'm not sitting here telling you, oh, have a relationship with a toxic ass nigga. I'm not sitting here telling you, oh yeah, go over there and do the shit that your mama told you wasn't good for you. Now, fuck that. We're going to unlearn what we was taught growing up to a certain extent. A certain extent. Because you need to have that respect that was embedded into you and them fucking values that your mother and father or grandma and grandpa or auntie and uncle, cousin too, they got respect, may have put in you. I am not saying that you cannot be there for people. I am not saying that you shouldn't meet them where they are. I am not saying that, okay, if they decide that they're going to fuck you over several times, you can't be understanding and willing to be there for them. Because, babe, you of all people know I've dealt with a fucking narcissist for well over almost two years and I've been understanding. I've been meeting you where you were. I left a two bedroom, two bathroom to a studio because I told myself to live in your means, meet you where you fucking were. If you want to be with somebody, you need to understand and accept them for who the fuck they are. Yeah, you got me fucked up. During this self love journey, okay. take it how you want, but I take that shit personal. You're not going right. to play with my motherfucking intelligence. Let, let, let me put it like this. It. I'm sorry. Let me put Don't it like sorry. this. Don't be sorry. Be mine. Let, let, let me put it like this. Everybody Another has a thing, category. Before M say that, it's a water break. Y'all know how this go on this show. When we drink, y'all drink. Let's get it. There are categories for everybody. You have family. You have friends. You have associates. You have co-workers. Relationships. You got relationships. Out of all of those, none of them are the same. Correct. That's what we were saying. But you, So you can't the way I say it, I, I, I tell people all the time, don't put me in the box because you think I'm going to be this way. Excuse me. Very true. I'm not that person. I'm different from every damn body. Which is, which I is tell my therapist that shit all the goddamn time. I am not like the rest of your patients. Don't think I'm like the rest of your patients. Don't treat me like the rest of your patients. But how can I do we that when you start off just like how you did and all y'all start off like that? Oh, like, off like, like what? Every, you don't think what, every patient individual? coming here saying I'm not like this, I'm not like that, I'm not this and the third. Like, no, and I get what you. I don't want to cut you off because I was getting what you were saying, but I was laughing at how you had said it. Because right. I, I, they do. That's just like you talk to a new nigga and they say I'm not like the rest. You are because all of them start off with that. I'm not like the fucking rest. I'm not as that is my job. You don't have to tell me what I went to school to learn. I know all y'all individual. You understand? That, that's right, your but therapist, some people, like, they're like, but therapists they still put you in that 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 category. That category of, of you need my help. That's the only category no, they put you in. No, no. Like, you need help. I've you been even in need help because of this. You need help because of that. And they you put you in categories. Like I have, yes. I've had different doctors that'll say, you know. I have other patients that have to wait too. Well, bitch, I'm not your other patients. I have other things to do. I don't have all day to sit up in here and wait on you. We had Neither an do appointment. That. <laughs> Neither do that. We had an appointment. You will meet me at the time you told me you will meet me. I'm not going to sit here three and a half hours and you don't tell me something. Like, well, I got other patients that do it. I don't give a fuck about your other patients that do it. I'm not that patient that's going to sit here with you all damn day. You're not paying me to sit here for three hours. So my question to you is, you see how you feel about the doctor? That's exactly how I feel when I say I'm get somebody else to do it. Wait, I'm not going to keep checking back up on you doing your the, journey. Your room, not, but, but the thing but is, I right, get it. if you yeah, continue to it. have to wait in that waiting room over uh -huh. and over Let's for go. two and three hours, go. you are Let's going go. to eventually go, go and say, you know what, I need a new therapist. Let's go. I'm going to leave you where you at. Let's go. I need a new And I'm going to find another one. I need to go. Right. right. But see, once again, that's, that's your doctor. boundary. That's the doctor. It's a person. That's not family. That is not family. Okay. First of all, my mind works like this. I have, different, up, I have different categories. I have friends. I have associates. I have family. I have coworkers. Everybody gets, and I have my, my inner circle. Now, those who are in my inner circle, it's just, it ain't, well, shit. It's only one person. Which is fine. It, it, I was about to say it's, it's But out of all the relationships, what do all of them got in common? Every, because you talk about the differences. Just having Exactly. That's all they have in common. Exactly. But everybody gets treated they, at a different level. Because you have because different boundaries for I'm those here, relationships. And when exactly. we're teaching the audience, like I said, we are... But one, what I'm we saying is, I don't saying, want we you love to having put, you on the show. I don't want you to put all the relationship, the family relationship and the, the boyfriend relationship 
and the co-worker relationship and the friend relationship don't put all of those relationships in the same relationship because they're not the same very true and you're entitled to those feelings that's why i said i love having you on the show you're entitled to that but my select audience that i'm nurturing who i'm talking to we understand the significance behind that wordplay we are not saying that every relationship is to be put into one category because you just gave us five different ones so we know that already. That's why the podcast specifically states relationships when it comes to business, relationships when it comes to your family, relationships when it comes to coworkers. It's a relationship. The word in general is a ship that we are both sailing on. It's right. a ship that we focus on. So take your mindset off of that. We are not saying, oh, treat every right. one of them the same. Because not every one of them can fuck you. Not every one of them can make love to you. Not every one of them can give you nurture and stability genuinely without having being forced or the obligation. It's different rules, different levels. We get that shit. But this audience that we nurturing for a motherfucking self-ish, because this is a self-ish podcast, in case you ain't know. Now, now that you know the name, you can understand what I mean by that. You're going to treat them relationships the same when it comes to creating self-discipline for yourself. That's why I said we really all have For a, yourself. And that's what we're yourself, getting on. That's what we're getting yourself. on. We're not talking so, about see, nobody else. That's why, the, okay, so that's where we are having a misunderstanding. Right, right, right. And going around and around. Like earlier. Because I'm talking about, you're talking about self-love. Whereas I'm talking about meet people where they are, which is self love, because that's and within my self love okay, journey, I'm, I'm teaching not, myself I'm, kindness I'm not, and compassion. Maybe I'm not saying. Maybe my words ain't 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 forward. Ain't, and I ain't, even, I, I've said that I've quoted it a couple of times. I respect that. You but know, the, I'm, I'm not. Know maybe you, I'm I know not, what you're trying to say. I'm hoping. I'm hoping your audience is understanding what I'm trying to say because I'm I'm, of course, I'm, I'm messing the, the words up. <laughs> so, but for me. I guess it's just, it's how I live. Right. I categorize everybody. And everybody like gets you put, on a everybody gets put in a, in an area. Correct. And, you know, some people are fortunate enough to get into that inner circle. Understandable. Some are not. Now, those who have got kids out of that inner circle, you can never get back in that inner circle. Understandable. Now, you can be on that outer circle, but that inner circle... You'll never get back in. Which is totally... And that's what we're saying right now. Like, we, we get all of that. And now that you said that, I'm so happy because in the beginning of the podcast, it was kind of coming off like you was against that statement that you just made. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was like, let me say the name of the podcast again so you can understand, even though I know I'm screaming self-love, self-discipline, self, 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 self. It's right, but I'm... I'm, I'm and what I'm, you need to do. But I was going off like a, a more of a mental... Right, right. You know... Personal experience. How to, how, to, how to get your mentals together because... If you're not expecting something from someone, you can't get hurt from that. That part. And that's all Because we once saying. again, everybody doesn't think the same. Right. But that's why I say, I don't, like we're having a conversation about expecting um, certain, from getting, convers expecting certain conversations to, to happen. And I said, well, I don't expect it because you can get hurt like that. Very true. And I definitely honored that. But as an individual, when you are setting your own boundaries, there we go, we I, understand, that word out. Yeah. I understand what you're saying when you're setting your own boundaries that you need to, damn it, what's the word? Give me the word back again. The what? The E word? Yeah. Enable? <laughs> Look, you know she don't like it. <laughs> she, you know Look, she I can't don't say like it no more. I got to forget it out my vocabulary. Let me delete it from my damn vocabulary list. Well, because I... I understand what you're saying about enabling, but I don't look at certain things as enabling depending on who I am messing with. Understandable. That's why when you gave the example, I wanted to stress exactly on that specific example when I kept saying, well, you used your sister. So I'm going off of the example you gave me and what you were saying that I'm telling you, like even outside of her, somebody called your phone and that person is not in your family. And then another person called your phone. And that person was in your family. And if you notice in the patterns, we get to treat different people who in different subjects and different categories or however you want to label it different ways but the only thing that i want you to understand is they got more than just you in common they have your accessibility yes and that's what i'm saying on this self-love journey what i'm teaching my audience is you have to learn to isolate 
You have to learn to create that self-discipline that will allow you to have self-boundaries. So when you voice it, you don't feel like you have to second guess what you're saying out your mouth because you're feeling uncomfortable by it. You are genuinely standing in your own fucking energy because you you trust yourself. And that's what I was stressing to you. Like, bro, no. Okay, I, we, I, we I, trust I, ourselves. I, I, I see and when, exactly. And even when it comes to family, no, nobody gets a pass at all, especially during the self-love journey. Over time, babe. You can yeah, no, so I, that, that, I understand what you're saying. I guess everybody's self-love journey is different. Of course it is. And I guess I'm at that point where I know my worth. Yes. I know who I am. That part. So, this... That's why I can be who I am. That part. You know you're cut off. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. I'm at the point where I've been dealing with so many people who didn't know my worth and value that I started looking for validation in them, especially as a Virgo woman. I naturally needed that validation of you needing me. Whereas what I'm learning during my self-love journey is I don't have to be that way. I don't so, have to be that way at all. Go an ahead, activity we did... A couple months ago, it was a bit ba- we were when we were learning our boundaries. Yes, and I'm only saying it because we keep categorizing family, friends. We gonna yes, say w- yes. So yes. what we did was oh that was so good. I know we what made about to say. yeah. Okay. That was, so that we was made good. a poster, and on our poster it said boundaries. 2024 boundaries. 2024 boundaries. This is stuff that we honestly we already started to put it. In the Fourth morning. in our life. Okay, and I'm coming out with my book, The yes. ABCs of Having Self Boundaries. So, what so we make did, sure y'all stay tuned for that. For go sure. ahead, go ahead. So what we did, she's working hard on it too. Okay. So what we did was on this poster, we did categories. One is our non-negotiables. That's for anybody, any anywhere. I don't care who you are, what you are to me, how you are to me. This is what it is. This is what I'm not accepting. That part. And then after that, then we categorize it as in our lifestyle. That part. We categorize it for finances. That part. For friendships, for relationships, which is like sexual relationships, for our family, for activities we like to do. Careers. Careers. So things that we will we will not accept within okay. those things. But regardless on those individual things, we have our non-negotiables. That part. That goes over everything that part it don't matter which category it don't you matter mean. what category and that's you why I said it's more you're than not you stepping being. over these yes. non-negotiables it's more than just you sitting over there saying okay well this is what you have in common right. with me so no. that that's that that's the way you guys do it right like i have my boundaries and i like i, I and we're not not de- depending on the like your boundaries covers everything. My boundaries change based on family, friends. And no, they and th- that's the thing. That's why they're boundaries. And that one thing for me, writing that out showed right. me that's the way it made me come up with some. But that that's the thing is like when you write that down, it solidifies. Like for, at least seeing it on paper, this is your belief. This is how you so want to like run your life. Orders. I'm not changing the way I run my life. That part. For my grandma. That part. Because she grandma. That part. I'm not changing the one that way I want to. Because she already lived her life. That part. You going through your life. You living a life the way you want to. At this point, I have to put forth these. Yeah, because my boundaries not changing. You my boundaries not changing. Let's change get to it. Like, let's get to it. Y'all know what this, what this damn podcast is about. I'm just, like, just like you Listen. saying, just like you saying, oh, I like this type of person. Yeah. You're like, not going. My boundaries not changing. Going on a blind boy. date and saying, my oh, prices are my prices. They yeah, not, not changing. Like, you, I know. I'm not trying to hit none of that shit. We like, ain't got no I, friends and family I, discount. We ain't got no black I'm pride not, sales. I'm, no, I'm no. not discounting. It even said in the emails I sent, don't even ask me, I'm my I'm not boy. discounting my emotions. Because you don't ask Nike to discount. You don't ask uh, Louis Vuitton to discount. I'm True not, religion. And I'll be damned if you discount my emotions. I'm not discounting my emotions. Like, I don't pull out my VA card all the time. Because you need to understand. No, you stop. need to understand. <laughs> yeah, but we don't get that in the real world. And my boundaries don't got a coupon that come with it. Right, because that's I, just my like heart me, is that's just like me my sitting over there saying that crackhead who wanted to fuck you, but you said I'd rather fuck you. He can come back like she said three days later and give you this coupon that you over here talking about. I got a VA card. I heard you was being nice today. I, okay, he got, got a nice coupon. He got he, he got his VA card. I heard you got one of those. You say as long as you pull this out, I can uh smell that honey bun. Like yeah, get the fuck you out of here, bro. You said you needed bro. some food. I got food stamps. Can we fuck? Yeah. What's up? Because you your boundaries change. You ain't a friend or family, so why would I give you that discount? But that's the thing, something that I'm learning, boundaries or I have learned, have no you cannot category. be loose with your boundary. 
If because I if you're loose, if you're loose through. with your boundaries, if I'm loose with my boundaries, my work, you gonna be loose toughness with work. me. Toughness you're work. not gonna give a fuck about my emotions because I'm loose with it. I don't care about me. Right, that I part. understand y'all boundaries, but y'all and we boundaries understand you have don't have boundaries. So I have eat. boundaries. <laughs> y'all we have boundaries understand. that cover the whole scope. We understand. Of what it you don't. Know. Know. It no. don't. It don't. I have a certain a things certain, that yes. I just will not tolerate. My period. mental peace. I'm my not. I'm peace. not taking somebody coming to me and calling me a bitch. I don't care if you my sister, my friend, nobody. Oh, That's a non-negotiable for me. Oh, I don't okay. care who you are. And my non-negotiable is I'm not being around nobody who's not willing to do their mental health. If you can't sit over there and say you need help, or you can sit over there and say you need it but not willing to go get it, we don't need to talk. You just I'm want not somebody putting to enable myself you. in that environment. You Even want if you don't to want nobody to enable yeah, you just want to talk. You want somebody to listen. I'm not around for that shit. Because now your energy is on me. One of the things I have to say is I'm also, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you, uh, an emotional empath. So, like, I am I literally take on other people's emotions and right. how they may feel in an environment. And if I don't have that mental toughness to understand why my client is talking to me that this is not my scenario, not my feelings, not my fucking problem, mm-hmm. then I will not be able to be there for them to help them what they're going through. If my Budar clients come up to me and they sit in, and I don't understand that, like, hey, this venting session that they're giving me is just them venting. And instead, I'm over here like, Em, you need to stop talking to that girl right now. You need to cut her off. I'll get the fuck out of the car. You want to look at me like, bitch, this is my car. <laughs> what you mean mm-hmm. like what do you what do you mean so yeah nah i'm not doing all of that but before we even get into all of that y'all know how this go we'll probably do another episode to let y'all know any other emotions and all of that good stuff however we are beyond my normal podcast mark i loved how today went and i appreciate you joining us as you can tell as my voice is escalating with excitement i'm hungry though i don't know about y'all but mm-hmm. i done said it like three times Damn, um yeah. We need to go get something to eat. We got to go grab something to eat. Like I told y'all before, we out in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? We out in the shop representing our uh, auto club, self-made family auto club in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want to let y'all know, I'm going to end this joint how I normally end this joint. We all like to give my audience some final words. Here's a final question that I can end this with. M, what's one thing you would tell 15-year-old you? The one thing I would tell 15-year-old me. And this is why none of these devices are allowed to be out during a podcast. What's up? Go on, M. I would tell 15-year-old me that it wasn't my fault. Mm. I did not make those people do the things that they did. So I should not be upset with myself in any way, shape, or form. I love that. Okay, I love that. And Sunflower, undivided attention, you know how I feel about it. Give me a second, cut that off, especially if it's something that don't involve me. Um, So, because you got to lead by example. So, you know what I'm saying? If this was an actual mindset session or you being a potential client for me on another visit, she's my support team. So, while you over there saying, oh, well, I'm telling 15-year-old me this and a third, like, I tell my, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm already letting everything out on a podcast. We need to be mindful of the people that's around us in that circle. Because, like you said, oh, well, I told grandma I'm dot, 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 but now I don't feel comfortable to say it. Right. She don't know how she may have taken it. Oh, well, I'm g- getting the self-awareness, and I'm saying this, but your attention is not facing her. For sure. You're not looking at her. She's literally talking to the window. And then while we doing all of this and all of that, you're still doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, you were supposed to drop something at the end of the podcast. I'm already doing no, it. I'm dropping it now. <laughs> she, 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 it's, it's a so, lecture for my audience. Oh, <laughs> if you go and book me and deal with me, you need to understand. I am. That's a non-negotiable for me. Pay attention. Get off your phone, because that's why this community is so fucked up now. Be mindful of what people are saying to you, especially the ones who are willing to help you for free. We take that in time for it for granted. And I think that is something we need to start being mindful of, especially if we want someone else to give us that same energy and love. We have to show them what it looked like because, like, we keep screaming, well, we weren't taught that. Well, I'm teaching you how I need to be loved. And if I'm teaching you it and you can't follow suit and you can only show me how you're loving and it hurts me, I don't want to participate. So that's exactly what I'm saying. Y'all already know how I feel about it. The quote of the week is, if they can't reciprocate, you cannot participate. Now, you bips. Any final thoughts, or would you like a question for me to give you? Oh, no. I just think doing that boundary exercise is very beneficial. 
So whenever you have any time, like any, you know, small Ooh, time, yeah, sit I down do. time, like even if you got to write go. it and come Sometime back. And give them homework. If you, <laughs> I thought, give them homework. I like that. Like, even if you got to like write it down and come back as time goes on and as situations go on to add a boundary, it's good to do it. Like keep a little notebook or something like that just to give add five, boundaries. Uh, give them five. So we'll set up. I like that. Let me pick it back off to interrupt you. I apologize. No, no worries. 2024 boundaries. When you go get your journal, go ahead and write out your 2024 boundaries so you can start off your new year strong. And yes. something that you can stay consistent with, unlike people who are here doing their damn workouts. Or now, try to start with your non-negotiables that go with your there life we go. in I general. I was just about to say that. So non-negotiables is one as a boundary. Your finances. Finances is two as a boundary. Career, which is a big thing. We don't know how to separate career and life. That part. Your career. And co-workers. Add co-workers. Co-workers. Career co-workers go with career. Yep. Four. M. You want to add a fourth one? It's a boundary you think people need to focus on. It's probably an F word for you. Of what? Fucker? No. <laughs> you better stop meeting my audience. Child. We going to give family for M. Family. Put yeah. your family boundary down. Put your family boundary down. And uh, baby, you want to let us do off with the last one? Which boundary would you like to go with? Friendships. Nice. Friendships. What's your boundaries when it comes to friendships? And as a bonus, because y'all know I like to be extra, what is your boundaries when it comes to time? Yes. What time is your is boundaries a big when one. it comes to dreaming? Because a lot of people don't even think that that should be a boundary. What, dream? Correct. Mm-hmm. Why should you have a boundary on dreaming? We'll leave that for another podcast. Ah! Thank you, though. <laughs> guys, I'm going to leave you off on this note, how I all do. I love you guys. Thank you for staying tuned in. In the words of Street Poet, when you wake up every day, make sure you sweat yourself ten toes down. And the outro is coming in right about now. And like I said, hopefully you learned something from this podcast as a takeaway. And if you are looking for more ways to fall in love with your self-love journey and you don't want to wait for a podcast, check me out over on my YouTube channel at Fun Size Creations where you can see me and all of my facial expressions and my shenanigans. You can also check me out over on TikTok at Fun Size Photography so you can check out some of my portfolio work as well as I'm getting everything together with teaching you guys how to boost your self-confidence through creating self-discipline. So, literally, that's the end of this podcast. I'll leave it right there, even though I'm going to add the outro right about now. With that being said, guys, if you are looking for help on your self-love journey, you are looking for an accountability partner or someone who can actually give you that little push that makes you feel like, if I just had that little bit of help, that little bit of energy, that little bit of courage, that step-by-step program and process that can help me, You are in the right place, and I want to say thank you for being a part of this team. With that being said, guys, I'm going to end this off how I end off all of my videos by saying, be you, do you, and be true. But more importantly, remember, learn to love yourself before trying to love someone else. Get out of here and do one thing today that will get you out your comfort zone because somebody has to say it. Later for now, guys, and brrrr.